All right, so recently I installed addressable LEDs in my truck's headlights, which I wouldn't recommend. It's a lot of work with very little payoff. But anyway, my hopes were to have some sort of sequential kind of animated turn signals. And I was really disappointed with the controller that these LEDs actually came with because it doesn't offer any kind of customization. You can't change the timing and it just plays this chunky animation and it just looks kind of cheap and lame. So I've been trying to come up with my own solution using Arduino or something, but I've kind of come to the conclusion that with my lack of coding skills, that this isn't something that I'm gonna learn how to do in a short period of time. Now I've come to learn that WLED, which if you don't already know, is an awesome open source firmware that you can just flash onto an ESP8266, has its own built-in macro function that's bound to a button pin on the board. This gives you a few options for displaying presets and animations based off of a long or short button press or even a double press. Uh, actually, that's a Node MCU, which is an open source prototype board that features an ESP8266 Wi-Fi microchip, okay? So basically, I was able to wire in the button pin from each ESP to a normally closed relay contact, which would then be triggered to open and close by the pulsing 12 volts coming from the truck's turn signal, which WLED treats as a short button press. Then once the flashing stops, the contacts stay closed and this is treated as a long press and it switches back to daytime running lights. Now I've got a little prototype kind of cobbled together here just to show you how it works and to test everything out. I've got 12 volts DC coming from a wall adapter, which is just gonna act as our vehicle's power. And then I've got two rolls of addressable LED strips, both acting as the left and right turn signal for now. And then I have a 12 volt to 5 volt DC buck converter. This is a little undersized. I've actually had to order a bigger one because this just keeps overheating, but we'll use it for now. Now I had to come up with a little workaround because the ESPs can't start if that button is pressed. And if you remember, we're on normally closed contacts. So they detect a button being pressed when they first start up and they don't boot. You could add a time delay relay in there or something, but what I've done is I've interrupted the button wire again with another relay, normally open contacts, and then that powers on only with the truck's accessories. So we kind of have two stages of powering on where you get the truck's ignition power, which looks like this, and starts up the ESPs, and they play a little boot animation. I've got a heartbeat that plays. And then when the truck's accessories power on, it'll start the daytime running lights, which look like that. Then if you were to receive that pulsing 12 volts from the turn signal, it would start opening and closing that relay and you would see the animation start to play. Then once the turn signal is done, closes the relay, reverts back to the daytime running lights. I'll show a little diagram here to show you how this all works. I don't draw wiring diagrams often, so don't judge me. And I'll also leave a link in the description if you want to take a closer look. So if everything goes according to plan, this should work on the truck. I'm going to make a little box for it. I'm probably going to remove the pins off the ESPs to make a little more lower profile and try to just sandwich it all together. I originally lost all the footage of the first headlight disassembly and the LED installation, but one of these things actually ended up being defective, so lucky for me, I had to redo the whole process anyway. At least I was able to get some new footage so I can show you guys how I did it. Now, normally opening a headlight is pretty difficult and time consuming, but you'll see here it's really easy to do the second time around since the sealant is so new and a lot easier to work with. I just use a heat gun to target the edges of the headlight and soften up the sealant, there's a lot of tutorials on this where people just throw the whole thing in the oven, but that can cause micro cracks in the clear housing apparently, and I just didn't want to risk it. Now, once I had it all open, I began the painful process of scraping out as much of the existing butyl or butyl sealant, which is that stuff you can see here that looks like gravel flavored chewing gum. 
A smarter person probably would have ordered it in black. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you wanna get out as much as possible so you can make a clean bond when you put the two halves back together and everything stays airtight. And I know I absolutely butcher these things when I first open them up, but you can't see any of this carnage when they're reinstalled anyway, so I don't really mind. The lights themselves are these really neat custom shaped PCBs that are lined with WS2812B pixels. That's pretty neat. I just placed them where the original solid light pipe used to be, which actually worked out pretty well. I fastened them down with some clear zip ties, ran the wires out the back, made sure to blast out any dust that accumulated and applied new butyl tape, butyl tape <laughs> before reinstalling the clear housing. The sealant is already really easy to work with, but heating it up definitely helps. Afterwards, I tested it all out and personally, I was amazed with the results. I couldn't be happier with it. The diffusion panel that covers the LEDs is just perfect for this type of thing. And obviously with WLED, there is endless options to play with. None of which I would drive on public roads with, but hey, the option's there for any time we're out camping or anything like that. Now, installing the controller in the truck was probably the hardest part of all of this since I have no experience with this type of thing, but I ran all the necessary wiring back to the driver's side footwell and just wrapped it all in split loom. You can see we have the addressable LED wiring from each headlight along with their respective 12 volt turn signal control wire. For the power inputs, I ended up running wires from the cabin fuse box using these nice little add a circuit things that have their own fuses. This just seemed like the best way to get the ignition and accessory power without having to actually cut or splice into any of the existing wiring. Now, if you have eagle eyes, you might have noticed these two extra LED outputs coming from the box. I just added these in parallel to the LEDs and the headlights so I could have some small reference lights somewhere in the cabin that would mirror what's going on outside. This is so I can always see everything's behaving properly and nothing's malfunctioning or flashing when it shouldn't be. Lastly, to hide the control box, I just removed this panel under the steering wheel to mount it in a spot I knew didn't get too hot or anything and tidied up all the wiring before hopefully testing everything out for the last time. Okay, so I've run into a couple problems after using this for a few days. Uh, it turns out the truck's accessories do stay on for about 10 or 15 minutes after the truck turns off. So with that happening, we run into the boot problem again because we need the ignition to turn on prior to the accessories. And I'm pretty sure I could just solve all this by changing a few lines of code in WLED so it doesn't utilize that pin for the button. But I've kind of grown to like that first boot up animation that you can set. So when you remote start the truck, it'll actually play whatever preset you have set. And then once you hop in and start driving, it just reverts back to, you know, legal daytime running lights. I'll spare you all the boring details, but essentially this just interrupts the accessory power if the ignition power is off. When the ignition power turns on, there's a small delay just so the truck can finish starting up and there's not that weird power surge because I have had the ESPs fail to boot because of that. Then after that, there's a time delay, the accessory power turns on and everything's gravy. I also 3D printed a nice little box with the whole power distribution system here just to make it not look so... You know, I don't, I don't really want that hanging out in the truck somewhere. So this makes it a little safer, makes it look a little nicer. I also added this nice little override button so I can turn the system on without needing to actually start the whole truck up just to test everything and change any settings. The wiring itself was pretty simple since I labeled everything nicely and basically just interrupted all the existing wires with the inputs and the outputs of the power distribution box. After that, I kind of just jammed the whole thing up in this little compartment. It was nice and snug, doesn't move around, doesn't get too warm, and I could finally test everything out without having any issues. All right, I wanna address a couple things before I finish off this mess of a video, because I know there's gonna be a few comments about some things. Um, I know the timing on the turn signal doesn't match up with the blink itself. I have to keep the blink to keep this whole thing legal in my province at least. 
Um, I was gonna try matching up the turn signal with the animation, but as soon as I started tackling that and making this video, or in the middle of making this video, WLED actually updated. So now they allow multiple macros, multiple inputs, multiple LED outputs. So it kind of makes my whole project obsolete. So I'm gonna end up redoing the entire project anyway. So I figured I'll just leave this as version 1.0, not sink any more time into it, just get this video out. And if there actually is any interest in this video, I can make another one showing how I'll be changing the whole system to make it a lot better. I plan on optimizing everything and having it just run off one node MCU instead of the two for the left and the right headlight. Cause I just used what I had laying around for this project. I didn't want to sink a bunch of extra money or time into it without knowing if it was going to work out or not, aside from spending money on the actual PCB mounted LEDs. I also plan on removing all the relays and probably replacing it all with solid state relays or opto isolators, uh, something that'll be a lot slicker and quieter and just smaller in general. Cause the relays themselves are a bit of a waste and very overkill for what they're being used for. I was honestly so out of my element with this whole project. That's why this video is a bit of a mess. I actually lost the footage a few times and it, the whole thing just kind of became a sunk cost fallacy because I've put a lot of time and effort into something I didn't expect to but I just wanted to get the video out, get the project done, move on to some new things. Cause I know I haven't uploaded videos in a long time. So I really appreciate those of you who stuck around this whole time and even watched this entire video. Um, also a massive shout out to the few people that actually emailed me to check in and make sure I'm okay. It's crazy to me to think that people actually took the time and cared that much just to check in on me cause I wasn't uploading. Um, that's amazing. But I'll consider myself back now. I've got lots of ideas and lots of projects on the go. So consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.